What's going on internet? IG here again today. We're going to be doing another Linux tidbits. If you're not familiar, this is the show where I take some Linux news and releases that are interesting to me. Sometimes they're not entirely Linux, but they're Linux related, and I package it up into a very short, succinct video. I also include a random Linux YouTuber and a random Linux distribution, all in the next five or so minutes, hopefully. So let's do this. <laughs> So at the top of the news docket this time, we have the Linux kernel turning 23 years old. Linus Torvalds released a statement releasing the 3.17 release candidate 2, I believe, of the Linux kernel. And yep, it's now 23 years old in the making. So of course, if you want all the deep and nerdy information, there's the whole release statement for that particular kernel release, and you can go check that out. But 23 years, that's not too bad. In other release-related news, Ubuntu 14.10, the Utopic Unicorn's first beta has been released. So if you're in a mood for testing stuff out, then you can definitely go and try those out. Also, the Ubuntu Mate respin is trying to get an official respin status. Uh, so they have also released a beta one of Ubuntu 14.10, the Mate remix. So it'll be good to see where that distribution gets to. And it'll be good to see it get some official recognition as a lot of users still like the GNOME 2 style interface that Mate provides. So basically the only changes with the beta one as opposed to what most uh, people, other people are running in the 1404 release cycle is updated packages, updated live libraries and updated kernel. That's really about it. GNOME 3.12, the more recent version of KDE, that's about it. Of course, you can see the release cycle schedule for Ubuntu 14.10 in this little infographic here created by the guys over at OMG Ubuntu. And if you want any more details than that, then check out the links in the description below. Like every other story that's on here, links will be in the description if you want more detailed information. Quick recap going on here. Now, another interesting piece of news is that Metro Last Light Redux is apparently coming to Linux. There is some pretty heavy work being done on porting it over to the Linux operating system. And obviously there is quite a bit involved here because Metro Last Light Redux is actually quite a graphically intense game. So one thing that we have learned is that users are going to have to have OpenGL 4.0 in order to run this game due to the high level of graphics that this game runs. It is of course trying to compare to DirectX 11, so trying to port that over to Linux basically rules out open source drivers immediately. So if you are wanting to run this game in the future when it does come out, you will need to be using the proprietary drivers for either Nvidia or the AMD Catalyst drivers. So at the moment, if you do have a graphics card, a relatively recent Nvidia or AMD graphics card, and you're running proprietary drivers, then you won't have any problems at all. And I guess we can all look forward to that game release coming out in the near future, along with quite a few others that have trickled down throughout the last couple of months. Finally, I want to talk about Tizen OS. Tizen OS was kind of the spin-off of Mego and Mamo earlier back than that, and Samsung kind of took it on and wanted to create something that they could put on their lower end devices or lower spec devices that they could customize fully to what they wanted to do. It is of course based on Linux and based on a lot of different open source contributions. Now Samsung, in partnership with Nike, have recently announced that they're going to be releasing uh, the Nike Plus app, you know, the running uh, in coordination with your shoes type app, uh, for the Samsung Gear S devices that are going to be running Tizen. So it's going to be interesting to see whether these smart watches and smart devices can really boost the, the idea of running Tizen on a device as opposed to Tizen running on a full scale, uh, on a full scale smartphone. A lot of companies, including Huawei, have been very pessimistic about Tizen's potential success because they're pretty much saying that the market's crowded out. And while that might be true for the high-end devices, maybe that's not necessarily the case for low-end devices or indeed wearable gadgets. So of course, if you want any more details, check out the links in the description box below. I just want to give you a quick update from the video that I did recently, or about a month ago now, on the game on 2.0. A lot of you left some really good feedback on that video. And the developers of the operating system has actually taken a lot of that feedback to heart and has changed and updated quite a few things. So I'll just run through those really quickly so that any of you who were interested might even be more interested now that those things have been added. So first of all, Game On is now Game On 1.8. Don't really know how the version numbers work there, but somehow they do. It's based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu 14.04 as opposed to the end-of-life Ubuntu 13.10 that it was before. The software itself apparently boots a lot faster now, and you can also get a USB 3.0 
uh, USB stick, not just a USB 2.0. And also it comes now with Play on Linux and Steam pre-installed, so it can widen up that gaming gamut even more. Of course, if you're interested in this distribution, then check out the links in the description and you'll see what you can find. He's also working on a game center that can kind of highlight and feature some of the games that are available to download on the particular Linux system. So overall, things are looking up for this distribution and it's exciting to see where the development goes. Okay, so now is the part in the show where I mentioned the random Linux YouTuber of the day. And while he's not that random, I'm sure many of you have heard or watched some of his videos before, Charlie Henson is a fantastic Linux YouTuber, mostly basing his videos on Ubuntu and customizing it and different tutorials on how to use Ubuntu. But his videos are very well explained and he's got quite a variety out there, including theming packs, how-tos, beginner tutorials, the whole deal. So shout out to Charlie Henson for his fantastic Linux videos. And he's also a big contributor to the Linux YouTube community. So definitely go and check him out if you haven't already. And we shall move on to our random Linux distro of the day. So the random distro of the day is KaOS or K-A-O-S. It is an Arch-based distribution, I believe, that is purely KDE. That's all it wants to be. It's a little bit like Chakra was back in the day. Well, technically it's based on Manjaro, Manjaro being a rolling version, slightly more user-friendly of Arch. It aims to be a very lean, mean fighting machine of a KDE distribution. It's very stripped back, it's got a lot of the guts pulled out, and it tries to be as slim and efficient as possible with using minimal libraries mostly associated with KDE. So all of the apps and the experience that you get is purely KDE. There are no other apps or libraries to clog the works up. Okay, that'll be all from me this week. Let me know what you think about all these different stories in the comments section below, and feel free to retweet this or share it or, you know, like it comment, subscribe, etc. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.